Okay, let's talk about some players that have had their dynasty values kind of just resurrected this offseason based on some different things. So before we get started, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos just like this one to help you win your fantasy league. All right, Kyle, who's the first player you want to talk about that uh, had a good offseason and their values kind of risen because of it? Well, I'm actually going to lump together two. And it's the Atlanta Falcons, Kyle Pitts, and Drake London. Perfect. The Falcons going out and signing Kirk Cousins mm -hmm. helps their immediate value go up, almost like strap a rocket to it, right, it's to the moon. And uh, they're the football equivalent of Dogecoin, basically. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk Cousins is going to come in there, immediately turn this offense, this passing offense around. Drake London's going to cook. Kyle Pitts is going to cook. It's going to be fun to watch. But on the long term side, they draft Michael Penix Jr. to extend that value increase beyond Kirk Cousins. Yep. Yeah. That's the part I love even more is they now have a long-term plan in place at QB, not Desmond Ritter. <laughs> they have exactly. a long-term plan in place at QB that I think is going to take these two very far. And if I'm being honest, you've probably already missed your window to buy low because already values on these guys are super high and they're only going to keep getting higher. No, I agree. Getting rid of the, the coaching change also helps all this, right? Yeah. So you're you're kind of moving on from that run first. But then you look at all the offensive pieces they have, right? So you have Kirk Cousins um, and all the guys we mentioned, Bijan and Algier make for a good running attack that you have to respect. But then you think of like they added Darnell Mooney and Rondell Moore. So these that. are other players that you actually have to respect on the field. Yeah. And so it spreads it out and opens these guys up where before you didn't really have much going on in that offense. So you could kind of focus in. They're not going to be able to do that. Like someone like Rondell Moore can be really dangerous. And so you have to respect yeah. him out there. Um, so no, I'm, I'm loving their value, but I think you're right. I think you missed your window on buying these guys at any sort of good price. Um, as soon as they made that coaching change, it, it was almost over. And then you add Kirk cousins into the mix. And I mean, Rick flair just, or, you know, just woo. So, woo. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, All right. No, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with ahead. you on the on the uh, Mooney and Moore additions. I think that helps a lot too because Moore is a really good wide receiver three slot guy that will help yep. take some pressure off for Pitts also. Yeah, not not just off of London. So yeah, I'm I'm loving all those moves for them this offseason for sure. Well, and a lot of people get afraid of oh too many mouths to feed, right? Moore mm -hmm. and Mooney aren't the types of players that demand a lot of targets, right? Moore is probably going to get like two catches a game for 90 yards and a touchdown or something stupid, right? Like every yeah. once in a while. They don't demand a lot of targets, but you still have to respect them. And so they're yeah. going to build out more. London and Pitts are still going to be your target hogs, and I love that. Yeah. All right, who's your next one? Next guy, Saquon Barkley. Whoop, whoop. I love the move. Yep. Excuse me. Love the move to Philly for him. Um, New York – was such a bad offense. He's going to waste. I felt really bad for him that offense. He was. He was being wasted. He was such a talent, is such a talent, was being wasted in that offense, and now he gets to go over to a place where they're going to be competitive. They're going to be ahead in games. He's going to get to run. He's going to have more scoring opportunities when they're in the red zone. You know, I with a guy like Barkley versus a guy in Swift that they had before, I think they try to protect Hertz and maybe cut out some of that tush push stuff at the goal line and let Barkley get those or at least split them. Either way, yeah. that's a significant. Yeah, even if he gets half of them, that's great. That's, that's a significant uptick in touchdown opportunities for, for Barkley with even half of those. So I love the move for him. Um, I think his um, 
dynasty value definitely rebounded with that. 100%. I mean, Saquon's had his, his health issues, right? But he's kind of doing the same thing. We thought, oh, Swift is going to Philly. He's going to get hurt. How long? And they kept him healthy. And he had pretty decent production there. Saquon is, I would say, probably better than DeAndre Swift. And so he's now going there in that same system. I, I love a good running back on a team where there's a running quarterback. And I know that takes away some of the rushes, but man, it pauses those linebackers for just a half second. Cause they, they have to respect Jalen hurts there, you know, and his running ability and any sort of pause in those linebackers yeah. is, is going to help. Or even the defensive ends have to, you know, uh, pause for a second and, and not crash down and stuff on those runs. And, and someone like Saquon Barkley can make you pay for that. As a Dallas Cowboys fan, I hate this. Me too. Right? I hate Saquon Barkley with the Eagles. But from a fantasy perspective, oh, I wish I had Saquon Barkley. because And before, I wanted nothing to do with him. I was passing. We had those discussions last year before last season. We did. Barkley on the Giants, pass. Hard pass. Sorry. He was yep. going to wait there. That offense sucks. Uh, but now on Philly – Man, I didn't see it coming in the off season. It hit, and I wish I wish I would have had some uh, Barkley on my team. So I had yep. no stock. Oh, I'm gonna move on from that sadness, and let's just talk about your last one here. Well, this will turn you around. Let's talk about a sooner, Hollywood Brown. Oh, that's, love us, love us some Hollywood there. Brown. Yeah. yeah. So you know he goes to the Chiefs this year, and you know he has. A potential to play a role for them to get significant targets. He only signed a one-year deal. But here's the thing. So Rasheed Rice got some trouble, going to miss some games. But when you look at this receiving core, Rasheed Rice is a short route, you know, slot. Possession, right? yeah. Possession receiver, right? Xavier Worthy is a deep threat. He's, he's deep route, speed guy. People mistake Hollywood Brown for being that same thing, but he's really not. He really is capable of running the full route tree and being a complete receiver. And I think you're, they're going to realize this during the season, and I think they're going to re-sign him and keep these three together going forward. I really do. And – what better team is there to be on than Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes throwing to you? Like, I love his value there. I think he gets re-signed, stays there. I think this value is going up, but he's not being talked about in that light yet. So there's for him, there's still a window to kind of buy maybe a little higher than his, his previous value with the Cardinals but not where it's going to be once we're two weeks into the season and people are going, holy crap, this guy can cook. Well, I mean, Hollywood Brown has been criminally underrated anyways, yeah. you know? Um, and so I, I liked him and I think I have him on multiple dynasty teams just cause I mean, he's dangerous. He's a good wide receiver. We watched him all through college and uh, just knew he would be good in the pros too. And he, he has been, um, so, yeah, now, like you said, what better team to go to? Holy crap. And now Patrick Mahomes has all of these weapons and, and toys to play with like he's never had before. Um, the field is going to be spread. I know we've talked about – we keep talking about that. There's other weapons on the field. It's not too many mouths to feed, especially for Patrick Mahomes, right? So it's not too many mouths to feed. And, uh, you know, I mean, Marquise Brown, Hollywood was having to play that number one wide receiver role definitively with Arizona. Now he gets to share some of that. You've got Kelsey, you've got worthy, maybe eventually have Rasheed Rice back. I don't know, but it takes some of that pressure off and he can, he can just run that route tree and be yeah. open. There's plenty of opportunity, plenty of opportunity there. And Lord knows he's better than Kadarius Tony. So he'll be on the field uh, <laughs> quite a bit. So yeah, I'm ex I'm ecstatic to have Hollywood Brown uh there in kansas city with patrick mahomes yeah you, you're right from day one he's been criminally undervalued and it's because people think he's that one trick pony speed demon and he's not he's yeah. a more complete receiver than that and so 
use that to your advantage and go out and get him in your dynasty leagues. You won't regret it. Yeah, he's still only 26. Yeah. He's pretty young, guys. Yeah. 